Hello, everyone, and welcome to Saybrook University's Mindfulness Moments and part four of my series on the science of breathing. So over the last several weeks, we've been exploring various aspects of the breath and the science behind our breathing. So if you'd like, you can catch the earlier parts, one through three, on our Saybrook self-care YouTube channel and on Spotify and um, a few other places as well. <laughs> um, so wherever, wherever you can find those recordings. Um, so through this mini series, we focus how the breath is important for our health. And so I'll begin by sharing some of the background science on the topic, and then I'll introduce a practice to help deepen our understanding and to invite this working knowledge into our own bodies and minds. So today our focus is on rehabilitating or correcting the breath by consciously alter altering the ratio between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the brain and the body. So a bit of background science, as it turns out, many of us are chronic overbreathers, And so there's a good number of studies that have actually examined this and have looked into the breathing patterns in large numbers of people and have shown that most of us are breathing way too much. And by too much, what we mean is uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 breaths per minute. And so this is, this is not usually like the the deep, luxurious breaths, but really like that sh shallow chest breathing. And so this throws off that balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. And so what we know also, and we talked about this last time in this series, is what's called the perfect breath and like that optimal breath. And this is where we can take in about six liters of air per minute. And that generally translates into about five to six breaths per minute. And so how are we supposed to breathe in a way where we get enough carbon dioxide? So without exhaling too much CO2 and taking in enough oxygen, well, we first look at how we're breathing and then we can correct it. And this involves a few things. So first, breathing through the nose. And this is really important, and there's a ton of research showing how nasal breathing is, um, is what we need to be doing. <laughs> and this is really important for our health. And when we breathe in through the nose rather than the mouth, this generates more air pressure, and it takes us longer to exhale. And this helps us to breathe in a more healthier manner. We can balance the oxygen, balance the carbon dioxide, and this healthy breathing also involves taking pauses between breaths. And that's really important because we have this brain sensor called the pre-Botzinger complex, which helps us control the inhale, the exhale. It controls the rhythm of our breathing. And these pauses are not always there in our normal breathing, which can lead to overbreathing. And so this overbreathing it leads to a deficit of carbon dioxide in the brain. And so anyways, this is kind of throws our whole system out of whack. Um, but really the key takeaway here that I want to drive home is that we want to train ourselves to breathe in a healthy way when at rest. And the best way to do this is to notice during the day, just doing regular things. You know, how, how are we breathing? This can just take like a minute or two. You know, see what the breath is like when you're making the coffee in the morning or doing the laundry or answering emails. And that's actually a really interesting one because there's phenomena called email apnea where we actually hold our breath when we're checking our inboxes. Maybe that's true for you. I know it is for me. So we can determine if we're breathing in this kind of healthy or unhealthy way. And again, what I mean by that is, are we bringing in the appropriate ratio of oxygen and carbon dioxide? And we can figure this out through a really simple test called the carbon dioxide tolerance test. And this is an easy way to tell how well you're managing 
CO2, carbon dioxide, and how well you control your breathing on a mechanical and a chemical level. So we'll do this together. Um, I'd like to play with this a little bit. And so I'll first explain this process and then we'll and then we'll do it. So for the next several seconds, you know, just go ahead and you know breathe normally. So in and out through the nose. And you don't have to, to change the breath. So just breathing, breathing normally. And then I do want you to find some sort of a timing device. So this could be your phone, you know, stopwatch on your phone or a watch um, or timer of some sort. So just some sort of time measuring device. And then what we'll do is we'll take in a nice big inhale deeply in inhaling through the nose, really filling up the lungs. We can use that diaphragm to help get that air into the belly. And then after we take that big breath, you're going to start your timer. And then we're going to measure how long it takes to deliberately exhale through the nose. And I'll time, I'll time this as well. So it's okay if you don't have a timer. Um, I'll, I'll time this as well. But you might want to have your own. Okay, so we're going to breathe in as much through, as we can through the nose. Fill the belly. When I say start, you'll then measure how long that exhale takes until lungs are empty. And so we're not you know, I know you can hold your, your lungs empty for a, a while. That's not what we're doing. And you know, that's not an accurate measure. So instead, we're really elongating that exhale until the lungs are empty. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So I want you to take in a nice big breath, breathing in through the nose, really filling the belly. Now go ahead and start your timer. And we're going to slowly exhale, controlling the exhale, breathing out as slowly as possible. And I have my timer going, and so I'll call out on 15 second intervals. So there's 15. And so going until the lungs are empty, and then that's where that's when you will stop that timer. So again, I don't want you to exhale too fast. And we're at 30. And so just controlling that exhale so we don't get to the empty lungs too quickly. And so some of you might have already reached that end of your exhale. So just go ahead and return to normal breathing. We're at 45. And others can just keep discarding that air all the way until empty lungs. And we're at 60 seconds on my on my timer. So I am I realize some of you might still be exhaling. And if that's you, then just keep going. But what we're going to take a look at now and what we just did was measure your CO2 discard rate. And so if this took you 20 seconds or less to exhale, then we can say you have a pretty low CO2 tolerance. So I want you to write down or remember the number three. Okay, if this if it took you anywhere from 25 to 45 seconds, you're at a, a moderate level uh, tolerance. And you can remember the number five or five to six. Okay, and then if you are 50 seconds or even longer, you're at a fairly high degree of CO2 tolerance and your number is eight to 10. Okay, so, the, and I want to note that this does not have anything to do with fitness or cardiovascular health. And in fact, these numbers can change based on how you're feeling any given day or how stressed you are. Okay, so what are these numbers? <laughs> um, so again, just note, noting what your number was, whether it's that three, five to six, or eight to 10. And we'll use them for this next part. And this is our breath rehabilitation practice, which is commonly known to some as box breathing. And so what we're doing here is an equal part inhale and exhale with a hold in between. And so you're kind of breathing in a, in a box. So you're, you're inhaling, hold, exhale, 
hold. And so you have your number. And so you know how long your inhales and your holds will be, right? So remembering from that last slide. So if you have a low tolerance, for example, your number is three. And so you'll inhale for three, hold for three, exhale three, hold three, and repeat this box breathing cycle. So we're going to do this for just a few minutes here, a few rounds of box breathing in your own space and in your own time, according to that number that you received from your carbon dioxide tolerance test. And just to, rem just to remind you, it was three, five to six for a moderate level, and then eight to 10 for high tolerance. Okay, so just go ahead as you feel ready, ready and um, begin this cycle of box breathing. Just counting the inhale, that pause at the top, and then the exhale. to pause at the bottom. And I'll just hold a minute or two of silence here for you to focus on that counting and the breathing at the pace that is working for you. Just a reminder to do this breathing in and out through the nose. Or maybe you would like to exhale through the mouth, but keeping that inhale <clears throat> through the nose. Just taking another round or two of your box breathing. And in your own time, just returning back to a normal pattern of breathing, or you can keep going if you like. And as you do this, you are increasing your neuromechanical control over the diaphragm. So you're deliberately, when you deliberately focus on a particular aspect of your nervous system, you increase neuroplasticity especially when you actively take control over something that you don't ordinarily think about, something like the breath, because this is making the brain actively rewire and pay attention to that circuit. So this is why doing a practice like box breathing can lead to changes in your resting pattern of breathing. So breath rehabilitation exercises like this, they don't have to be done for very long periods of time. So that's why we only did this for about two minutes. And you can do this, you know, two to three, you know, for two to three minutes, just a couple times a week. 
And this will greatly improve your breathing and prevent over-breathing when at rest. So just including some of the citations and sources here in the bibliography. And just in closing, I want to thank you all for dropping in and maybe learning a little bit about um, this way of breathing and correcting the breath and um, wishing you all a luxurious remainder of your day or evening. Thank you so much.